Beloved in the Lord, glory to Jesus Christ. I greet you with these words once again from my St. Athanasius Chapel. Sadly, still finding ourselves separated physically, but courageously in faith united spiritually through our common prayers to our Lord and our prayers for one another, and also through the working of technology. In this morning's Gospel, St. Mark records the bringing of a possessed boy to Christ for healing. His father had taken him to every doctor he knew of and had purchased every medicine available. He had brought him to the synagogue and finally to Jesus' disciples, all to no avail. Our Lord's response to the father is, bring him to me. Like the father, when we have a sickness or problem, we have someone to whom to turn, someone who cares, someone who said, come to me, all of you who labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Christ deals with the boy's father tenderly and beautifully. He asks, how long has he had this? Our Lord, of course, knew. The question gave the father the opportunity to speak out the story of his long sorrow. In this, we see that we have a God who loves us and sincerely cares and truly understands. As the father was telling his sad account, the child had another attack. Looking at the gentle face of the Savior, the father pleaded, If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. The key phrase here is, if you can do anything. We understand why the father had doubts. Every other effort had failed, from doctors to the disciples. Having overturned every stone only with disappointment, it was no wonder the father had doubts. A person can have so many problems, so many disappointments, so many failures, that after a while, he may begin to doubt not only the existence of God, but even the existence of anything good at all in life. It is possible for the sorrow to be so great that we lose hope, and losing hope, we lose God. Such was the condition of the Father when he said, If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus responds with another if. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. The problem, our Lord said, is not whether I have the power to heal. The problem is whether or not you believe I have the power. For all things are possible to him who believes. The Greek word for miracle in the synoptic gospels is dynamis, power. Miracles happen when faith connects with God's power. If we purchase the finest kitchen appliance with all kinds of attachments, it is still powerless until it is connected to the electric outlet, the source of power. Our faith must simply not be an intellectual acceptance of the existence of God or the good things of the scripture. True faith is more than that. True faith is trust in the one who has the power of life and death. Once there is a connection between Almighty God and a human in need, the fullness of his grace fills the emptiness. Faith connects us to the greatest power in the universe. You shall receive power, our Lord said, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. In this gospel account, Jesus performs two miracles. He heals the epileptic boy, he increases his father's faith. The boy's father went from saying, if you can do anything to I believe, help my unbelief. This was not a change from unbelief to complete belief. Help my unbelief makes that clear. The father expressed and acted on what belief he had, but he was honest with Christ. He did not hide his doubt. No human believes perfectly. In all of us, there is a mixture of faith and moments of doubt. What is important is that we not let our lives be guided by our doubts, but be guided by the faith we have. Miracles happen not because of perfect faith, but rather because of imperfect faith in the perfect Christ. Christ explains to his disciples why they couldn't heal the boy. 
Such a demonic force can be cast out only by prayer and fasting. These, of course, are two aspects of the Lenten discipline we are following right now. And St. John Chrysostom tells us that they are like two wings that carry a person to the heights of God. Prayer is a wonderful thermometer of our faith. Our communion with the living God who is love and in whom we can find the strength and power to love. We can measure the strength or weakness of our faith in Christ by the fervor and meaningfulness of our prayers. In this moment in time, when our church temples are physically closed to the public, the family or individual prayer life that takes place in the little church of our home must direct our thoughts and our gaze to the saving cross atop Golgotha and the loving God, the loving Savior who ascends it. Fasting is the acid test of the seriousness of about the Lenten season in the sense of turning away from all those things which enslave us to our passions or which detract us from our faith, which take us away from love, from loyalty, from faithfulness, from integrity. We must fast not only from food, but also from sinful ways that separate us from a loving relationship with the Savior, who gives us the example of fasting for 40 days and who triumphs over the source of every temptation that will lead us to spiritual death. Now, this second half of this great fast, a Lent we never expected to experience, is a good time for us to seek to increase the vessel of faith that we have through our daily trust in the Lord and His love, our prayer life, our reading of the Scriptures, our worship of the Lord at our icon corner, either by ourselves, with our family, or through technology with our brothers and sisters in the faith, and our almsgiving to those in need or to our parishes that may, that may now be struggling unless our faithful stewardship continues. We need to remember that real faith is not merely saying, yes, I agree to the truths of orthodoxy, but more importantly saying, with that boy's desperate father, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And living out our complete, as far as possible, trust in a person, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ. My friends, when the Son of God became incarnate, he came from heaven to a world that was full of sickness. Epilepsy, leprosy, blindness, deafness, a flow of blood, a withered hand, dropsy, paralysis. Most of his miracles were healing miracles, healing from the sicknesses of the time. What is amazing to me is that often he went out looking for those who were sick so that he could heal them. We must take comfort in knowing that when we pray to our Lord, we are praying not to some stone-cold God, but to someone who understands, not only because he is divine, and knows all things, but because as human, he has experienced such things as sickness and sorrow, pain and suffering, and death itself firsthand. He doesn't have to imagine what we are facing or going through. He only has to remember. Our Lord provides us with an example of how to care for the sick, especially now amidst this pandemic. Of course, we need to take the necessary steps not to pass on the infection. But to our Lord, the sick or dying person was not the other, not someone to be blamed, but a sister or a brother. When Jesus saw a person in need, the gospel writers tell us, he was moved with compassion. This is how we must be, as he was toward the father and the boy in today's gospel, with a heart filled with compassion. This night, let us recall the greatest miracle of all time is Christ himself, the Son of God who became man for our salvation. We must remember how much he cared for people and healed them during his earthly ministry, how gently he treated the troubled father and increased his faith, how he healed the possessed boy and so many others of all kinds of illnesses. We must acknowledge that the size of our vessel of faith they need to be increased 
so that it may be filled with the peace and power and love of the one who loves us more than we love ourselves. That increasing of our faith, then, could be the goal and labor of the rest of our Lenten journey to Holy Pascha. May our Lord guide our every step forward and heavenward. In leaving you, I commend you to the loving care of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and always, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever.